Hi, everyone. My name is John Levesque. I am the Director of Community and Evangelism Programs here at DocuSign. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to take you through some material on a regularly scheduled basis, a bit of how to typically focused on integrations. And so today I'm actually joined by a very special friend, Muhammad Ali. Mo, how are you doing today? Good, man. Very good. Thanks for having good. me on your channel. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you, man. Excellent. So Mo here is a principal solution architect at DocuSign, which means that he is uh, very, very experienced in all of the tools and putting them together. And so I've asked him to come and hang out on the channel and uh, show us a bit of his knowledge and, and show us actually how to build something practical that you can also go and build and use today. So I'm going to go ahead and let Mo go ahead and introduce himself a little bit better. And then he'll tell you exactly what we're building today, and he'll get into it. Go for it, Mo. Thank you very much. Um, well, he's given me a great intro. Thanks, John. I am a, a principal solutions architect at DocuSign. Um, a lot of my time is spent with customers, um, with digital transformations, um, you know, particular with fi financial uh, sector and, and the government sectors is kind of my specialty. Um, I love Microsoft uh, products and all the integrations that we have with them, which is vast. And I'll take you through some of those today. Um, Power Automate is a great product and, and Power Apps um, are, are an amazing way to visualize and, and create that workflow. So that's what I'll run you through today. Um, feel free to, to connect with me on LinkedIn. There's a, a QR code there. Just scan that. I'm sure everyone's familiar with QR codes now. Um, Rightio. Look, I thought I'd start with a little fun poll. Um, does anyone know what the most downloaded DocuSign connector is today? Mm. I'll give you a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, hints. So what do you reckon, John? SharePoint, Salesforce, you know, Office 365? Is it, you know, Outlook and Word or is it is it Ariba? What do you reckon? You know, I'm going to say it's either... B or A, Salesforce or Share? I'm going to go B. I'm going to go with Salesforce. Oh, well, a lot of people have said that in the past. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't be far off. But the truth is, Office, um, Outlook and Word are our number one downloaded wow. um, plugins. You know, so, so they're extremely popular uh, because they're so easy to use. Just download it and you're in Word, you press a button and you're getting a document signed. Um, you couldn't get much easier than that. So it really, really extends what you do today. Um, and, and Microsoft's a very, very important strategic partner for us. Indeed. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's just an example of that. Um, another one that I thought I'd share with you, not work related. I, I am a father and, um, you know, I, I do have a few kids and my excuse, you know, for not for having kids, but, but as soon as I had kids, I just really wanted to take advantage of, of dad jokes, you know, so I thought, let me, let me share one with you right now because because I'm a dad and I have dad jokes. So why the hell Yes, not? yes, please. <laughs> um, I've got it here on my phone, so I'll just, I'll just read it out. Um, okay. Why did the scarecrow get an award? Why? Because he was outstanding in his field. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible dad joke, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally going to use that on my kids. Uh, funny. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get back to business. Um, DocuSign and Microsoft make that perfect match. Um, I grew up in the 80s and we had a show in Australia called Perfect Match. It was a dating show. Um, and that's what this is. It's a perfect match between two different parties. Uh, you know, it's Mom. like a... A first date that's just gone perfectly. That's 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 DocuSign and Microsoft for you. You're going to be that's excited to know yeah, that show has come <laughs> back. The Perfect Match show is back. That is not really. Old. Yes, yes, yes. Go, you can go look it up. Everybody, go look it up. It's a thing. <laughs> I will. I'm excited now. <laughs> yes. Uh, brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to bore you with 101 slides. I want to jump right into the product and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the demo for today, what I'll do first is I'll actually run you through an end-to-end -end demo. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll show you how I built it, how I built this by Mo. Um, 
and then I'll show you how to update it as well if we have time. So okay. um, in this example, we'll run through uh, a typical kind of scenario, um, not just Power Apps, not just Power Automate, but, but you know, how we can work with the whole Microsoft ecosystem. Um, we're going to go through an example of, of an employee onboarding. So that's, they've just you know, started at a new company called Tele. Um, Ethan's a, a millennial. He loves digital and mobile first. Um, everything he does is on his phone. Um, so that's what he expects. He's joined Tally. He's a great company. Um, but he expects that amazing experience um, and, and a seamless end-to-end -end process. Now, once um, Ethan's finished his, his onboarding, um, Penny, who works in the payroll department, uh, wants to collect that information from him and, and wants as much automation as possible. Doesn't want manual tasks, doesn't want to have to track things herself, wants to have a system to be able to manage that for her. And Good she lives me. in Microsoft Teams, so she wants all the notifications to happen in there, right, as, yeah. as you expect a lot of people today. Yeah. Um, so, that, so I'm going to show you a combination of Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint lists, and, and Microsoft Teams today. And I'll show you how they can all work really well together um, to solve um, to, or to provide a great experience for, for this end-to-end -end process here. So, so that's what I'll show you right now. Awesome. Um, I already I already relate to Penny. I feel like I our world is uh, you know Zoom and, and Slack, but so yeah, those, you know, 100%, I, I live yeah. in those. So this is an example of a power app. It's a, and I'll show you how I built it. Um, but this is the Power App, and Ethan is logged on, and I've just pre-completed what Ethan would have, would have done beforehand. So Ethan put his name, his email, uh, phone number into a, an onboarding app, and then he'll click the Submit button. Now, by clicking the Submit button, we've, we've got embedded signing built into it. So what that means is it's a seamless process from a Power App um, to signing off on that uh, as a DocuSign envelope that, that'll be you know, kicked off right now. How is that kicked off? Using Power Automate in the background. So we've got a Power App, kicks off a Power Automate process, which you know, will kick off this, this envelope. And now all the data that we've collected from that Power App has been merged into this welcome onboarding form. Um, and this will have all the information that's required for this employee. Um, so we've got all that information there. Ethan can then sign off on that very easily. And what I've done here is I've actually included, um, you know, anchor text or, or auto place text. And I'll run you through how, how that works. You, you might see it in the background there. There's some gray text that I left it gray in, in particular. And I'll walk you through how that works in a sec. But right now, we'll just go through the experience. So as Ethan, I want to be able to sign that. So quickly, I can sign that. And I can also do this on my mobile device very easily, but I'm showing it on my on my laptop because it's, it's just to show you the full experience and then to show you how it works in the background. But this would just as easily work on a mobile app, which which is awesome as well. Click finish. Um, and now that's Ethan's kind of experience, which is great. From here, it'll get automatically routed to Penny. Now, we're not talking about it from a DocuSign point of view. We're talking about it from a task tracking point of view. Um, and from a SharePoint list point of view, and from a notification point of view. So um, from here, if I click refresh, there we go. Right there, a notification has been sent to the payroll team, a new employee payroll, Ethan employee. And if I go down, there's my link there to the task that's been assigned to the payroll team. So if I click on that link, it'll then take me to a SharePoint list or a Microsoft list, list is, is probably the, the correct term. The, the new um, term, Microsoft list, the, yes. Yeah, the new term, yeah. Got to get used to that one. Um, all the way down the bottom, what you'll see here is Ethan employee, a task has been assigned um, and the task has processed their payroll. So, so then this is a task that's been assigned to the payroll team. If I click into that, You'll see that all the relevant information, the, the phone number, their email, everything that we've captured from the Power App has, has trickled down into this task that's been assigned to the payroll team. Um, we click on that and then we can see the signed document as well. So we've got all the evidence that they've, you know, they've captured, they put their information correctly, they've signed off on it. 
Now, this is a simple example, but you can imagine there might be government forms, there might be, you know, uh, 401 tax or, you know, 401 forms or uh, other forms like that. Um, and then all this can be captured in the one process, as well as the evidence in the background, which is the certificate that comes with it. So that, that all gets tracked and attached to the actual um, task in, in, the, in the Microsoft list. And you can see here we've captured all the evidence like their IP address, timestamp, location, and so forth. Nice. Very nice. So that in itself, I've just run through that entire example, four different products plus DocuSign, five products in about four minutes. So it, it really goes to show, you know, when you, when you can have that seamless process end to end, it can be really powerful and it, we can really automate that process end to end. So that's exactly what we've done here. Beautiful. I like how, you know, the, on Ethan's side of the experience, as soon as he hit submit with his information, it, it wasn't like he had to go and search for an email, right? That auto population, that, that auto pop-up of the signing experience, that's, I mean, really next level. And then if we think about it in the context of a mobile experience, then it's fully enclosed, right? We would look at the Power App, we'd put in our information, we would hit the button, we would then also have that envelope populated right in front of us, and we'd get to experience it right there. And it just... It makes it so that like you can move through that process so fast, right? Because now there's no chance for Ethan to not sign and, and continue the process on. So it's just, I love that little touch, that that instant pop-up is beautiful. I, I completely agree that, I mean, that kind of makes, makes a big difference. I mean, you imagine a large company, thousands of employees, you know, that really adds up all, all the, all that double handling of data and information, you know, that, that really, really adds up. So, so absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Automation is really important. And obviously the errors as well. I mean, imagine you miss one, right. So, or two here and there. So, so that, that makes a big difference as well. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the employee onboarding experience. This is the app here okay. in the power app section you know, of my, um, you know, Microsoft 365 account that I've created. I'm going to go into it and I'll show you how I built it, what I've done, um, how I've linked it to that Power Automate, the, the DocuSign, you know, template and, and the, the whole process basically. So let's do that right now. Awesome. Okay. This is my app. We've got first name, surname, everything here, you know, aligns to a, a field on the left. Now, I won't take you through how Power Apps work because there's so much, you know, content online um, around that. Um, so I, I guess, you know, a lot of people can do it really good justice. Um, I, I, what I want to do is focus on how this really works with DocuSign. Yeah. So I'll give you a high level. These are all the fields here. Um, each one of these are really important, the names that you've given them, because they'll link back to the, the merging it into DocuSign. Um, what's important here is this submit button. So this submit button will actually have a formula in it. And this formula is linking to a Power Automate flow. That Power Automate flow is actually called embedded onboarding without a space. You see that there? Embedded onboarding. So this is the formula that you'd set, set flow output, embedded onboarding, and then you add all the input that you want to add into it. So the first name, the last name, the email, and the phone. Now, I'm mentioning that to you now uh, because once we look into that Power App, I'll show you exactly how that links to that Power App. So that's what you need to remember now. And I'll, I'll explain that second line to you as we're going through the Power App itself. Um, but essentially, once we've got that sorted um, and we understand how we're linking to the Power App, um, to the Power Automate, this is my Power Automate flow here called Embedded Onboarding. You can see it's the same name as that. Um, now we can go into it from here, uh, click edit, but I don't like the way it looks. It, it kind of shrinks the screen a bit and it pops it up. So what I'll do is I'll go into the actual flows, all of my flows um, that I have here, um, this one here. So this is the one I've, I've prepared earlier called embedded onboarding. Um, click edit just to show the full page experience. And again, it's this exact same one that's in my Power App. So this, this is called Embedded Onboarding. And this is the Embedded Onboarding one here. 
And you can see here the first step is me collecting the input from the Power App form, those four variables, first name, last name, email, and phone. And that's exactly what I've done here. So the Power App, let's go through it again. Um, first name, last name, email, and phone. So, so that's the four variables in the same order as, as they have them here, and, and that's essentially how you collect it. And then what you do is you use those variables throughout your creation of that envelope and the sending of the envelope. So that's what I'll run you through here. And I've, I've intentionally got step by step, so let me take you through each one. Creating an envelope. So that's kind of step one. Um, making sure that you know you're creating the envelope, you've connected to your account, um, and you, you name it with something that's that's useful. Um, that's that's that one there. Now the second one here is is what we're doing here is we're grabbing a document, that onboarding document. We're going to grab it from a SharePoint directory. So onboarding letter, Power Apps, and I'll show you what that looks like. I did talk about those auto place text. So it's in this tally kind of folder. Onboarding letter, Power Apps, if I click into that, I'll show you how I've set up that document um, because we're using this document in our onboarding. Now, the great thing about this is if you need to update it, you simply come in, you update this document, and it will automatically update it the next, the next time someone needs to, um, you know, kick that process off again. So we've got name, email, and phone. We can see here that we're using auto place text, name, email, and phone. This will make sense to you in a second as we're going through the the um, the flow and then the signing area as well. I've got those auto place text there, so those 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 ones there. So that's just, that just tells it where I want those fields to appear. Yeah, and so Mo, I think important thing to call out there, right? You want to make sure and have the the forward slash uh, that that Mo has there, right, around the items when you're placing them, and then also you can see he has them in gray. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and, and make sure that these are white so that they blend in entirely with the page and date when data is placed over them. Uh, it will then just appear in normal text over that uh, and you won't see the, the anchor placement. Um, and so just a couple things to note as you are trying to recreate this, a couple possible gotchas there. So you can see there, they're all hidden now. And, and that's, thanks, John. And that's exactly what you meant to do. Um, but I've left them in gray just so we can see them and we can see what I'm doing in the background and what I'm what I'm hiding from everyone, basically. Um, but that's essentially a hidden text that tells it where, where those fields are meant to go. Okay, so we get the document. Now we add the document to that envelope. So we're taking the, the document that we've grabbed there, adding it to the envelope, um, and then we're essentially, you know, giving it a name basically. So that's, that's all I'm doing there. Um, so you can give it a unique name based on the, the name of the you know, employee, um, just to give it a, a useful name when you're archiving it and storing it. Add recipient to envelope. Uh, the first step is to get the envelope ID. So everything is linked to an envelope ID. Um, so you can see the, the envelope, IDs linked to the document, and this all starts from the create envelope step. So if I was to you know, remove this, for instance, I could easily add that in just by searching for envelope ID, and then you can see it's, it's available to me if I scroll down under the create envelope step. That's essentially what I've done there. Um, and then we're just adding in the signer name and the signer email based on those inputs from the Power App, um, one additional step here that I'll call out that's important for embedded signing that you won't have to do with remote signing where you're sending an email out is client user ID. So set it to a value. By setting it to a value, you're telling DocuSign that this is um, embedded signing, which means that the person is going to sign the document when they click the submit button. They're not going to get a separate email to, to then sign the document. It's all part of a single experience. So, so that's really important. Um, it, it can be any number, but just make sure you make a note of that number because you're going to use it again at the bottom of, of this flow. So client user ID, give it a number. So make sure that that number is, is unique. Um, and then add tabs to recipients. Remember how we talked about the signing tab? that anchor, anchor string or auto place text, that's what I've done there. So if we go back, sign one, 
backslash backslash. Um, that's a signature type of field. And if I go back to my document, I scroll down, we can see that same one there, sign backslash sign one backslash. So that's what I'm referencing in my document. See that there? Um, so that's me adding a tab for the recipients. I can add another one for name. And all I'm doing when I'm, I might show you how to add a new one in. So if I was to add a new field in, add an action, we can add a tab for recipient just to walk you through how that actually works. Yeah, add tab for a recipient. I'm using my demo account, so DocuSign demo. It'll work for either demo or production. Um, so the first step is to link it to your um, DocuSign account. So make sure that you're using the same um, authentication. So that's the one that I've got there. And then I've got my Power Demo account. Um, same thing, envelope ID, linking it back to the original one, which is my great envelope step. And then also recipient ID, because these tabs are now linked to a recipient. Oh. Recipient ID. So making sure they're all linked, because this is important when you have multiple people signing a document, you're telling it which fields are aligned to which person who's signing a document. This person signs on the left side, this person signs on the right side. And this is essentially how you tell them what fields they're filling in. And now from here, you can choose essentially what type of field you want to add in. Um, let's say I want to add a text field in. I can add a text field, and then there'll be a whole bunch of options that I can select. So we'll, we'll go through that in a sec. Let me show you name, for instance. Um, this is a name field, name, backslash name, and so forth. So um, email, phone, and then date sign. They're all, they're all pretty similar. Um, let's say I want to add a new field in for, I want to capture a, a you know, social security number or a tax number, for instance. Let's call it tax number. Add that in. Consistent, um, Arial, and make it all consistent with my other stuff, black, and I think it was size 11 that I have, and it's bold. So what I've done here is I've essentially added a new field in. And now how do I make sure that field appears on my document? Well, this is where that tax num comes in, this one here. Copy that, paste it in here, go up to the top, and click press enter and paste that in there. Tax num one. Beautiful. We go back and we make sure that's tax num one. And that's that's it basically. So I've just linked this document to this field. So when I run this again, it will have another field there. That's that's going to have a, ta a tax number in it essentially. So so that's that's me adding a new field in. Nice. Like I said, I, I didn't spend too much time on that. I just, you know, did the same thing as the other fields, just adding that in. Um, and you're pretty much done. So again, zero code. It's all just filling in fields and, and it's pretty straightforward once you've done it a couple of times. Um, send envelope. So once I've once I've added all these fields in, phone, date, sign, they're all they're all pretty similar. Um, we send the envelope. So then sending envelope is simply just sending the envelope ID and the account number. So we've done that before. Now, this is where it's different for embedded signing. Like we said, embedded signing is when you're signing in that same screen, that same experience. Um, this, there's a, a step called generate embedded signing URL. And this, is, this will start the same way, the envelope ID, the signer name, the signer email, and then that client user ID that we talked about. That links back to the recipient that we added before. So if we go up to the top where it was add recipient, there it is there. So this specific recipient will have embedded signing linked to them. And what that means is if you have multiple people in a, in a workflow, the first person might be embedded and the second person could be remote. So you have full control over how you want to deliver that. And then once we've done that, this will generate a unique URL. Now what we need to do is redirect our Power App to that URL so that we can do the embedded signing. That'll be the DocuSign URL that they need to sign on. And all we're doing here is returning that sign URL, which is the URL I've captured from this step. 
So let's do this one here. I'll show you what I mean. So if I go, yeah, URL as part of the, that's the output from this step here, and we're adding it into this step here. So this sign URL um, is in my Power App. So this is the last step in this process. What I will do is jump back to my Power App now and show you how the last step will link back to my Power App. So we go back to my Power App and we see the first step was sending out um, all that data and merging it into the envelope. The second step is actually getting the, the, the URL back from that flow and then redirecting our Power App to that URL, sign URL, see that? Flow output dot sign URL. Man, that is like so clever and so easy. It makes sense, right? It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love, that's why I love these tools and how integration just pulls things together in such a way. Like, and I mean, obviously, kudos to our, like our team, Tony and team who have done a ton of work on this connector. Like these advancements in the connectors are phenomenal. And, and this new suite of what's possible is just really cool. Really cool stuff, man. Awesome. So I could take, let me take it one step further, right? We're okay. here, we're here, let's just do it, right? Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's add that tax number in. So we've, we've added it into the flow, we've added it into the, to the Word document. Let's, let's capture that tax number here. So the, my cheat is just to copy and paste. So I'll just copy and paste the field and then come here and then it really helps you, right? So you've done that. Um, what I want to do here is just rename that. So it's just phone one. I'm going to rename it to tax num, uh, just to keep it the same as what I've been naming it throughout. And then I'll rename the hint, the hint text to tax number or SSN. Better keep it international, you know. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. So I, I've essentially just added a field in there to capture that tax number. Now, how do I link that to the Power App? Well, that's back to my submit button that I was talking about before. Um, so you'll add in a step here um, to add the, the, a new variable in there. So what, what that will do is that will allow me to go tax num dot text. There we go. So I've essentially just added a new input into my, um, you know, my calling of, of that flow. So now what I need to do is they'll come up with an error because in my flow, I haven't really told it that I'm, I'm expecting a new variable. So this is what I'll do here. I'll add that in tax num, and this is my tax number. That's it. Um, I can then reference that in my new step that I created, add tabs for a recipient. This is the one that I created for the tax number. And so the value will be that tax number. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, perfect sense. And yeah, I yeah. and I love how you just decided to add one on the fly and showed all the components to how that works. It's beautiful. It's it's really not not that difficult once once you you know get in there and, and try a couple of yourself. Um, now, essentially, th there's a bit of a trick to, to Power Apps. There's not, nothing to do with DocuSign. It's just whenever you change the flow, you really need to remove it and add it back in. So, so I'll show you that trick now because it took me a little while to figure it out. Such um, a great tip, such a necessary tip. <laughs> and then add it back in. The Power Platform is a wonderful suite of tools. It is also a finicky set of tools that sometimes <laughs> requires extremely precise actions. <laughs> you are not wrong there. Um, not wrong at all. So that's that's essentially it there. So, so that's, that's how that would work. Beautiful. Um, we covered both sides of the experience, you know, for Ethan and uh, oh, what was her name? I really... I really Penny, identify Penny, Penny, yes. Penny, yes, with Ethan and Penny, seeing both of their sides of the experience 
And, and ultimately seeing how the power platform and DocuSign really came together to just drag a few building blocks into place, write a couple lines with a few variables and, and truly stitch together a grand experience. And so Mo, this is awesome. Um, let's close with this. I wanna ask you, do you have any resources or materials that we should share with folks? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, these are just some of the use cases uh, to think about. If you're in any of these industries, these are, these are great. Not just these industries, but you know, it's, it's really, really popular uh, in automating a lot of processes. These are kind of three blogs that are very relevant to this session today. Um, sending an envelope, sending it via Power Apps. And then once you're finished signing, there's six common post-signing tasks that you can do. So how do you collect data? You know, how do you, how do you collect an attachment? All those kind of things. So, so that's part of the last blog there as well. Beautiful. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, for those of you at home, go ahead and check the description. I will make sure that we add all these links to the description so you don't have to type them out. As Mo said, we'll have a whole bunch down there for you to go ahead and check out and help you get started. But Mo, thanks to you, man. Thanks for coming and joining us today. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much, John. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And thanks to you guys at home. You know what to do. Go ahead and click that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. And check back regularly for some more material. We'll see you in the next one. See ya.